Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing well and welcome to my first gear review. And today we're looking at a Gallery airbrush. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to pronounce that, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna go with Gallery. Anyways, uh, full disclosure, this company sent me this airbrush for free to review and I'm gonna give you my honest opinions about this uh, particular airbrush and uh, how it performs and whatnot. So let's have a look what's in the box. My first impressions on the box is that, yeah, it's a very nice box. Everything is nicely presented here. And uh, I do like the fact that you have the explosion um, photo of all of the parts inside the case. That's a very nice touch. I do like that quite a bit. But I did notice something peculiar. The um, airbrush test uh, placard or whatever, um, I think it's a photocopy, not an actual test. So we're off to a little bit of a rocky start here, but uh, let's see how everything else, else fares out. Now, looking at the um, quick start guide, I have to say that everything is really nicely illustrated here. It's easy to understand what's going on and what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. Uh, it has some cleaning tips and some troubleshooting in case you run into some issues with your airbrush. But yeah, let's have a look at the airbrush itself. It has a chrome finish and it has pretty, I would say, traditional style to it. It feels good in the hand and um, it's a dual action airbrush, of course, which is uh, pretty much a standard nowadays. All right, let's have a look what else comes in the box. And I think right off the bat, this is kind of a interesting and unique thing to this airbrush is that actually comes with two different needles and nozzle sizes, uh, a 0.38 millimeter and 0.5 millimeter needle and nozzle configuration, which is pretty cool. It also comes with some extra O-rings, which is definitely a nice addition to this airbrush. If you're anything like me, you end up uh, losing a lot of these small little items along the way. And it's really nice to have that in the box as well. And also it comes with some uh, lube, which is uh, fairly thick looking uh, stuff. Uh, I found it kind of uh, peculiar that it has a sign here saying that it's non-toxic, but in the back it says that keep away from children and uh, in case of uh, touching with skin or eyes, rinse with clear water immediately. If swallowed, seek medical advice immediately. So yeah, probably a good idea not to eat this, even if you're feeling a little peckish. All right, next what I figured I would do is I'm going to disassemble the whole airbrush and we can have a better look at some of these parts and uh, kind of try to determine the quality of them. And a little bit later on, I'm going to be bringing up the uh, camera even closer to some of these parts and we can actually uh, have an even closer look at them and do some fancy uh, macro cinematography. Oops, and there goes the needle nut. I hope I can find it a little bit later on. But yeah, as you can see, everything comes apart very easily. Uh, there's no need for any kind of pliers or anything like that, which is probably actually always not the best thing. You kind of want these parts to be a little bit more snug uh, to avoid any kind of leaks, for example. And by leaks, I mean air leaks. But yeah, here we have the whole airbrush fully disassembled. Let's have a closer look at some of those other parts that I was talking about, starting with the needle. So now that we have a very close up look here on the needle, I think you can also notice that uh, the needle is slightly bent, but not, that's not really a huge issue. I can correct that uh, pretty easily and we can definitely make this thing straight as an arrow. Next, let's have a closer look at the nozzle and the nozzle cap. And right off the bat, I can see that there's some paint still left in both of these parts which is uh, kind of unusual, I think, but the instructions say that there might be some, so yeah, whatever. I can clean that right off myself and uh, it's not really a huge issue, just unusual, I think. I was actually really surprised to see this next part that we're having a closer look here, where the uh, main lever and the plunger rod are connected. Usually these are separate parts and having them connected like this is kind of ingenious because then you will never lose the uh, plunger rod, which I have done many <laughs> occasion. And uh, yeah, this is a really nice touch, I think. 
This next part is labeled in the instructions as value body, but I think more accurate description would be a air regulator assembly. The air regulator rod works nicely, no issues with that, but I did notice that the threads around the part itself look kind of rough, and that's the case with the whole airbrush, to be honest. But then again, that is to be expected from an entry-level airbrush. Now we're having a closer look at the airbrush body itself. And while checking things out around here, I noticed that there's a part inside of the airbrush that is kind of chipped. And yeah, that's not great, but I don't think that's going to affect the um, operation of this airbrush whatsoever. I think it's about time I start playing around with the airbrush now and do some actual painting. So what I have here is um, premium uh, Vallejo airbrush paint which is pretty much my go-to brand when it comes to airbrush painting nowadays with my Iwata Highline and the custom Micron, which I use all the time. But uh, let's see how this thing fares against those. So what I figured I would do first is kind of get the feel of the airbrush before I do any kind of serious painting or testing on this piece of paper. And uh, what I'm gonna test is going to be the atomization of the paint and also um, the handle handling of the airbrush while I paint. And what I've noticed here first is that I do kind of have to press quite a bit on the trigger to get air and uh, paint to come out from the airbrush itself compared to my Iwata uh, airbrushes. But it's definitely manageable. So now let's have a closer look on the automation of the paint to the piece of paper that I just painted and uh, as you can see it looks pretty grainy uh, up close. I think this is probably because of the paint so let's switch to into a Createx paint and see if we uh, get any better results. So let's duplicate the test with this Createx um, Wicked line of paints and see if we get any better results. Alrighty, let's start doing the same kind of swirly patterns on the piece of paper that I did with the uh, Vallejo paint. And uh, right off the bat I can notice that I think it might be because this is slightly more watery consistency, but the paint is definitely coming out nicer now. And the control is still kind of, um, I, would, I wouldn't say difficult, just different. And I think it's just because I've been using the Iwata airbrushes for so long that it's just um, ingrained into my muscle memory how it's supposed to handle. But I have to say, uh, this is uh, looking pretty good so far. Alright, so now that I've played around with the airbrush a little bit and gotten a feel for it, I'm going to do some actual testing. And I think a good test to do uh, is paint a fin. So I'm going to be using the same Createx Wicked colors um, because they just seem to be shooting a lot better from this airbrush and I want to make this test fair as possible. So we're going to start with this red color and uh, paint a fin. So this red paint is going to be the background color for our fin. So I'm painting a classic roach fin. And uh, I gotta say this paint is coming out from the airbrush a lot better than it did with the uh, Vallejo kind. Although I do see a little bit of um, sputtering from time to time, but I think that might be because of my trigger control. And the next paint going in is going to be black. And this is actually the hardest part of the whole test because I'm painting those fin rays and they are notoriously difficult to do if you don't have a good trigger control. So this is a really good test, I feel to uh, test out the capabilities of this gallery airbrush. After I was done with the first ray, I was like, wow, this is actually super impressive. This uh, airbrush is, is handling this pretty damn well, considering it's a 0.38 millimeter uh, needle. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually super impressed by this uh, performance so far. 
One thing I noticed that's kind of different between the Iwatas and this Gallery Airbrush that kind of throw me off is that the trigger control is a lot more stiffer, I guess, for lack of a better word. I do need to kind of press the trigger a lot further back to get some paint to come out and it's kind of throw me off a little bit and I think the um, quality of airbrushing is affected by it. But I think this is something that uh, I can probably get around with as long as I keep uh, using the airbrush and kind of getting the feel of it and how it behaves. But uh, yeah, so far so good I think. To give you guys a better understanding on the capabilities of this gallery airbrush, I decided to pit it against my Iwata Highline, which is a mid-range airbrush. And I think you can notice uh, pretty clearly here that the uh, Iwata is able to produce a lot crisper lines and the atomization of the paint is a lot finer. That's not to say that the gallery airbrush is a terrible airbrush. I think with a little bit of tweaking I could cut pretty close to these results with the gallery airbrush as well. So like I mentioned earlier, this airbrush actually comes with two needles and two nozzle setups. So next we're gonna test out the 0.5 millimeter needle and nozzle setup. And I think you can notice here that uh, the switch between the two is really quick. So I think that's a really huge um, plus for the gallery airbrush system that you can actually switch between the two. Uh, nozzle and uh, needle setups pretty quickly. Since this airbrush uh, is shooting a lot better with the uh, Cretex paints, I'm gonna be using this Wicked uh, Black again and do a little bit of testing and see how this thing fares compared to the uh, 0 0.38 millimeter needle and nozzle setup. And again, we're running the paint without diluting it at all. I think this is a good test to do on the airbrush to see how it uh, handles this thicker paint. And here in the beginning I was like, yeah, this paint is coming out really nice, I can get good lines, the atomization is pretty good for a 0.5 millimeter needle. And then the airbrush started to sputter, and it started to sputter a lot. And I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it, was this just a, some sort of malfunction? Was it uh, was the airbrush defective? And I couldn't get it to run better with this needle and nozzle setup. Maybe there's something that's slightly loose in the nozzle. I, I couldn't tell you. But um, with this 0.5 millimeter needle, I wasn't able to get really great results. I'm sad to say. But yeah, really unfortunate results on the 0.5 millimeter needle and nozzle setup here. Um, the atomization of the paint is as good as you can expect from 0.5 millimeters. Uh, I was able to get pretty nice looking dots with it though. Um, let's say you're doing uh, some sort of uh, trout pattern for example. Might be good for that, but uh, beyond that I'm not sure. Um, I'm a, I would be a little bit hesitant to use this needle and nozzle combo for any detailed work. But yeah, despite the less than stellar performance of the 0.5mm needle, the 0 0.38 did perform pretty damn well. So just keep that in mind. You necessarily don't need the 0.5mm needle nozzle setup for this airbrush. I can think I think you could make do with the uh, the smaller option here. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, like the video if it did and uh, subscribe to the channel for Maybe more content like this. I'm not sure. It depends on the companies out there who might or might not want to send me some free stuff to review. But yeah, see you guys on the next one.